Hello children. Today we are going to start your new chapter Taro's reward. This is chapter number 3 in your book Honey Circle. Taro's reward is a popular fairy tale in Japan. It involves the story of his son Taro who wanted to fulfill the wishes of his father. Taro was a poor boy. He earned money by chopping woods from the jungle, but the money he earned was not sufficient for him and his parents. One day it started bl- blowing cold winds. All people in the home felt cold due to wind passing from the cracks of the wooden house. His father wished if he could have some sa- sake to energize his heart sake is a popular and costly drink of japan taro was sad as he did not have money to buy the expensive sake he decided to work hard next day he woke up early and went to the forest to chop woods suddenly he heard the sound of falling water it perplexed him as there was no river here earlier since he was also thirsty he followed the sound of water soon he found a waterfall behind the rock he went near to the fall and put his hand in the water to his amaze he discovered that water was not water but sake he became he became happy and filled some sake in his pitcher upon reaching the house he gave his sake to his father the father sipped and sake the sake and started dancing with joy now this is the story taro's reward now let's read the story and explanation of the chapter first paragraph a young woodcutter named taro lived with his mother and father on a lonely hillside all day long he chopped wood in the forest though he worked very hard he le- earned very little money this made him sad for he was a thoughtful son and wanted to give his old parent everything they needed now here we can see a woodcutter who cuts the wood the meaning of woodcutter is who cuts the wood and chopped means cut into pieces so taro was a poor boy he earned money by chopping woods from the jungle but the money he earned was not sufficient for him and his parent he wanted to more money because that money was not sufficient for them because he wanted to fulfill all the desires of his old parent now let's move to the second paragraph one evening when taro and his parents were sitting in a corner of their hut a strong wind began to blow it whistles through the cracks of the hut and everywhere felt very cold suddenly taro's father said i wish i had a cup of sake it would warm me and do my old heart good now here i would like to tell you that sake sake is pronounced like a fa and k fa k in japanese it's a, a rice wine and is very uh, powerful and very strengthful so what happened that day 
one day it started blowing cold winds one evening all people in the home felt cold due to wind passing from the cracks of the wooden house because they were very poor and they don't have the proper house so they were living in a hut and that hut was made with wood and that day what happens all people in the home felt cold due to wind passing from the cracks of the wooden house his father wished if he would have sake to energize his heart sake is a popular and costly drink of japan and it's full of energy also so that day he wished his father wished if he could have some sake to energize his heart sake is a popular and costly drink of japan now the here you can see the word whistle through whistle through means pass through with the whistling sound it's a wind sound and it is pass through with the whistling sound and the other word is cracks cracks means narrow gaps narrow gaps gaps between the roof and the wall that is called cracks and you can other word you can say openings now let's move to the third paragraph this made taro sadder than ever for the heart warming drink called sake was very expensive how do i earn more money he asked himself how do i get a little sake for my poor old father he decided to work harder than before now he was started thinking and he was very sad that day because he was not able to bring that sake for his father taro was sad as he did not have money to buy the expensive sake because the sake was most expensive drink in the japan so he started thinking that how do i get a little sake for my poor old father because it was very expensive so he decided to work more harder than before now let's move to the next paragraph in previous paragraph i have we have seen he decided to work hard more harder so he can get more money now paragraph number 4 next morning taro jumped out of his bed earlier than usual and made his way to the forest he chopped and cut chopped and cut as the run climbed and soon he was so warm that he had to take off his jacket his mouth was dry and his face was wet with sweat my poor old father he thought if only he was as warm as now he decided to work hard next day he woke up early and went to the forest to chop woods and he was continuously chopping and chopping till the sun was at his head and it was so warm and his mouth was dry and his tongue was dry also that time and his face was wet with sweat he was sweating that time because it was so warm and he was working continuously from the morning and with that he began to chop even faster thinking of the extra money he must earn to buy the sake to warm the old man bones he does des- he decided to work hard next day he woke up early and went to the forest to chop wood and he was trying to 
get more and more wood for more and more money because of the sake let's move to the paragraph number 5 then suddenly taro stopped chopping what was that sound he heard could it be could it be possibly be rushing water taro could not remember ever seeing or hearing a rushing stream in the part of the forest he was thirsty the axe dropped out of his hand and he ran in the direction of the sound because he was continuously chopping the woods he became thirsty and suddenly he heard the sound of falling water it perplexed with as there was no river here earlier since he was also thirsty he followed the sound of the water and what happened next next he found a waterfall behind the rock and he was because he was chasing the sound then he found a waterfall taro saw a beautiful little waterfall hidden behind a rock kneeling at a place where the water flowed quietly he cupped a little in the handle hands and put it to his lips was it water or was it sake he tasted it again and again and always it was a delicious sake instead of cold water and what amazing thing was happened that day since he was also thirsty he followed the sound of water soon he found a waterfall behind his rock he went near to the fall and put his hand in the water to his amaze he discovered that water was not water but sake he became happy and filled some sake in his pitcher also and that time he was surprised taro quickly filled the pitcher he had with him and hurried home the old man was deli- delighted with sake after only one shallow of liquid he stopped shivering and did a little dance in the middle of the floor now to his amaze he discovered that water was not water but sake he became happy and filled some sake in the his pitcher upon reaching the house he gave his sake to his father and the liquid shivering because he did not have any proper pot so the liquid was shivering and it was spilling out and he was dancing all the time because he got a very precious drink let's move to the eighth paragraph that afternoon a neighbor stopped by for a visit taro's father politely offered her a cup of sake the lady drank it greedily and thanked the old man then taro told her the story of the magic waterfall thanking them for the delicious drink she left in a hurry by nightfall she had spread the story throughout the whole village now here in this paragraph you can see upon reaching his house he gave this sake to his father the father sipped the sake and started dancing with joy a neighbor came in the evening father offered her a cup of sake the woman happily took the sake father told her about all the incident which happened to the taro and she felt very happy and she drank and she left in a hurry 
by a night fall she had spread the story throughout the whole village because it was amazing experience for her now paragraph number 9 that evening there was a long procession of visitor to the woodcutter's house each man heard the story of the waterfall and took a sip of the sake in less than an hour the pitcher was empty now this woman spread the news to all the people in the village every villager rushed to the taro's home and tasted the sake next morning taro again woke up early search the biggest pitcher and went to the waterfall so now every each and every um uh, person those who were living in that village they came and they tasted the sake and in less than an hour the pitcher was empty and next morning taro started for work in the next paragraph next morning taro started for work even earlier than the morning before he carried with him the larger pitcher he owned for he intended first of all to go to the waterfall intended means planned when sh- he reached it he found to his great surprise all his neighbors there they were carrying pitchers jars buckets anything they could find to hold the magic sake then one villager knelt and held his mouth under the waterfall to drink he drank again and again and then shouted angrily water nothing but water others also tried but there was no sake only cold water Next morning Taro again woke up early searched the biggest pitcher and went to the waterfall To his surprise he found that other villagers were also going to the fall and they were there Soon people reached the fall and tasted the sake but they found that water of the fall was not sake but plain water People became angry and decided to draw Taro into in the fall they became angry now in this picture you can see we have been tricked trick means deceived shouted the villagers where is taro let us drown him into this fall waterfall but taro had been wise enough to slip slip behind a rock when he saw how things were going he was now where to be found now taro the people became angry and decided to draw taro into the fall taro hid behind the rock and waited till all the villager went home and they thought the people thought that they were deceived by the taro and because of this they got angry with taro and they wanted to draw taro into the fall now paragraph number 12 muttering their anger and disappointment the villagers left the place one by one taro came out from his hiding place was it true he wondered was the sake dream once more he caught a little liquid in his hand and put it to his lips it was the same fine sake to the thoughtful son the magic waterfall gave the delicious sake to everyone else it gave only water only cold water
Now Taro hid behind the rock and waited till the villagers went home. He now tasted the water again, but to his surprise, he still felt that it was sake. The fall was giving Taro a sake, while to villagers it was giving a plain water. Now here you can see the muttering means speaking unclearly. Now at the end of the story we can see the next paragraph. The story of Taro and his magic waterfall reached the emperor of Japan. He sent for the young woodcutter and rewarded him with 20 pieces of gold for having been so good and kind. Then he named the most beautiful fountain in the city after Taro. This said the emperor was the encourage all the children to honor and obey their parents. Now the story of Taro's care for his parents reached the king. He awarded Taro 20 pieces of gold to encourage other children to take care of their parent. This magical waterfall make him rich and famous. Now sent for here is the meaning of sent for called. Now children you can see how the story started and it ends. The moral of the story is we should take care of our parents and elder. God helps only those person who takes good care of their parent. If we talk about the moral of the story, the moral of the story of Taro's reward is that one should always work hard to fulfill the dreams and wishes of the parents. A child should be thoughtful, obedient and hardworking to make parents' lives happier. With hard work, one can get whatever he wants and even nature helps that person with miracles. Now let's talk about the new words of this chapter. Hillside, close to hill, sentence, his expensive means costly, delicious means tasty, instead of, in place of, politely means gently. Now let's sum up this story. A young woodcutter named Taro lived with his old parents. The father said, I wish I had a cup of sake. This made Taro sad because sake was expensive. So next morning, he went to the forest to chop trees. He worked very hard. Then he felt thirst. Suddenly, he heard a sound of waterfall. He went towards the sound. And he caught a waterfall. When he tested it, it was sake. He was surprised. So he began again tasted it. But again it was a sake. He had a pitcher with him. He filled it and came home. That day a visitor came and Taro offered the sake to her. And told the whole story about sake. Next morning, Taro went to the forest, but all the villagers reached there before Taro. They were filling their vessels, but it was only water, not sake. So they got angry and wanted to beat Taro. But Taro hid himself behind the big rock. When all the villagers went away, he went to waterfall and tasted it. It was the same sake. This story reached to the emperor. He rewarded Taro. This was to encourage all the children to honor and obey their parents.
now these are the new world hillside close to hill expensive costly delicious tasty instead of in place of politely gently chopped means cut into pieces whistle through pass through with a whistling sound cracks narrow gaps openings sake a popular japanese drink sa is pronounced like fa in father and k rhymes with we so it's sa we fa we expensive means costly cupped a little in his hands took some water in his hands as if in a cup now delicious very tasty pitcher a pot usually made of wood now next word is greedily greedily means as if desiring more and more and the other word delicious very tasty pitcher a pot usually made of wood now here you can see tricked tricked means deceived muttering means speaking unclearly sent for called sent for means called for this story we can learn with hard work one can get whatever he wants and even nature helps that person with miracle the taro not only got the sake for his father but he also got reward and fame by doing hard work hence hard work is the only key to happiness this we should understand mother and father on a lonely hillside all day long he chopped wood in the forest though he worked very hard he earned very little money this made him sad for he was a thoughtful son and wanted to give his old parents everything they needed one evening when taro and his parents were sitting in a corner of their hut a strong wind began to blow it whistled through the cracks of the hut and everyone felt very cold suddenly taro's father said i wish i had a cup of sake it would warm me and do my old heart good this made taro sadder than ever for the heart warming drink called sake was very expensive how do i earn more money next morning Taro jumped out of bed earlier than usual and made his way to the forest. He chopped and cut, chopped and cut as the sun climbed, and soon he was so warm that he had to take off his jacket. And he heard, could it be? Could it possibly be rushing water? Taro could not remember. ever seeing or hearing a rushing stream in that part of the forest he was thirsty the axe dropped out of his hands and he ran in the direction of the sound taru saw a beautiful little water
waterfall hidden behind a rock. picture he owned, for he intended, first of all, to go to the waterfall. When he reached it, he found to his great surprise, all his neighbors there. They were again and then shouted angrily, water, nothing but water. Others also tried, but there was no sake, only cold water. We have been tricked! shouted the villagers. Where is Taro? Let us drown him in this waterfall. But Taro had been wise enough to slip behind a rock when he saw how things were going. He was nervous. Was it true? He wondered. Was this sake a dream? Once more, he caught a little liquid in his hand and put it to his lips. The same fine sake. Would cut her and rewarded him with twenty pieces of gold for having been so good and kind. Then he named the most beautiful fountain in the city after Taro. This, said the emperor, was to encourage all children to honor and obey their parents. 